Are you ready to glaze your cylinders? Today we're going to learn about a few ways to glaze your cylinders other than the brush since you already know how to brush on glaze. Three coats of glaze have to be applied when you use the brush. For a faster way of applying a single coat of glaze, today we're going to learn about dipping. First thing that you're going to do is make sure that your cup is clean. So if you think there might be any dust on the cylinder, you would take a damp sponge and just kind of lightly brush it off with the damp sponge and get all the dust off of it. And then you're going to choose your cone six glazes. Make sure that you read the label and see that it says cone six glaze. There are other glazes in our studio that are not cone six and you would have pretty disastrous results if you used a cone six glaze and we didn't fire it to cone six. Remember that the color of the glaze does not necessarily mean that it will turn out that color. This for example is a yellowish color and it will turn out to be this matte red color. Go by the name and by the test tile on the label. Now that you're in ceramics, you can use this fun tool to help you mix your glaze. Make sure that the drill is clean before you plug it in. Sponge it off and make sure there's no residual glaze from someone else's project on the blender. Okay, you can put it in the water bucket as well to clean it. And Insert the blender before you turn it on, and then slowly pull the trigger. You probably want to blend for about one minute, making sure that there's no hardened material at the bottom of the bucket, and that it is thoroughly mixed before you begin glazing. When you're finished mixing, let the blender drip over the bucket and then put the blender into the bucket of water. Turn it on for a few spins and that will get most of that glaze off of the mixer. However, to be courteous to the next person, you're going to want to unplug that mixer. and then wipe off any other glaze that's still on there. It's really easy to wipe off when it's wet like this. And it's much more annoying for the next person if that glaze has been dried on there. You can leave the mixer in the water bucket. Now I'm ready to glaze the inside of my cylinder. What I'm going to do is take a super clean container, like this measuring cup, and I'm going to fill it up with my glaze, like so, and I'm going to pour it into the cylinder. I don't want to let the glaze sit in the cylinder for too long, so you want to do this all very quickly. I pour the glaze all the way up to the top. Take my glaze, I hold it from the bottom of the cup, and I dump it back in. I slowly rotate my wrist around, trying to get that glaze to kind of evenly coat the inside as it's pouring out. I keep the cup sort of at an angle so that I don't get a drip straight down from the bottom, but it, rather it flows around the sides. I got a little drip down the side and I'm going to take my damp sponge and I'm just going to remove that because I don't want that glaze to contaminate my outside color glaze. Okay, and I have a nice even coat on the inside. If I still see a little bit of a drip in there and I'm going to let that come out. 
Then I just need to wait and let that dry completely. I've allowed the inside of my cup to dry completely and I have basically three even coats on there. Much more even than I could achieve by brushing. What I'm going to do now is carefully stick my hand on the inside of my cup so I can hold it like this. I'm going to dip it into my second color of glaze. And I want to do this pretty quickly. Go all the way up to the edge, come back out, I kind of scrape the bottom off on there to get that excess off, and set my cup down. I don't want to touch it until it is completely dry again. While I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm going to make sure that any glaze that is on the table or the floor is sponged up. Remember, glaze does contain silica. It's just as dangerous when it's dry as clay dust. Now that the outside of my cup has also dried, I had this dunked in, and so that created three even coats on the outside. If I see these little pinholes in my glaze, what I usually do is just take my finger and rub over them. Let the dust of the glaze kind of fill in those pinholes with my dry finger. Now you notice that I have a lot of glaze on the bottom of my cup. So what I'm going to do now is get a damp sponge and I'm just going to scrub that glaze off. I'm going to try not to get water on any other part of my cup that I want to stay glazed because that water will thin down the glaze and make an uneven coating when it's fired. Now you can see I have the bottom completely cleaned off. It's in no danger of sticking to the kiln shelf, but I do want to make sure that I have a nice straight ending edge. I don't want this edge to be brushy looking or uneven, so I'm going to kind of decide, do I want glaze all the way up to this line or right up to the edge? And I'm going to make that look nice and straight just by being real precise with my sponge all the way around. Okay, clean straight ending edge. If I wanted to, I could still paint on some decorations with another glaze, but I really wouldn't want to dip this again. Remember, it already has three coats of glaze on it, so if I add any additional glaze, I'm going to put a little white around the rim here with a brush. That should be fine. It won't be too much glaze just to have one more coat kind of around that rim. Remember, this white will interact with the other glazes and it'll make some new color. I'm not even sure what it'll turn out to be. I probably wouldn't want to paint a design right close to the edge in case that thicker glaze would drip down and then it might stick to the shelf. So maybe I'll put a little ring of dots around here as well. Another way that you can dip your cups, if especially if you just want one main base color on the inside and the outside, is with a tong. So I'm picking up my cup on the inside and outside with these tongs and in a very fast and fluid motion I'm going to dunk this into the glaze bucket. You have to have a bucket that has enough glaze to do this. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with my other one where I'm going to let the glaze flow out by rotating it. So it looks like this. Rotate it around, let that glaze flip out and coat everything nice and evenly. You can see it did get on the bottom obviously, so I will have to wipe that off once it's dry. Or sometimes I just continue to hold it in the tongs. I wipe off some of that excess now while it's wet and then I can 
set it down to dry, and clean my tongs. I've waited a few moments and now my cup is completely dry and I can pick it up. I notice that I have a lot of these little pits on my cup from the dunking. That's just from air bubbles. Perhaps there was a little dust on the uh, cup maybe. And so remember I'm just going to take my finger and kind of rub over those. If I feel like there's kind of a large one that didn't get covered, I might take just a little bit of glaze and fill that in. Then I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to wipe off the bottom making a nice clean straight ending edge where I want that glaze to end. And remember, a dunk equals three coats, so I wouldn't want to necessarily dunk this again in any glaze, but I could brush on an additional glaze uh, if I wanted to make some other decorations and see how those glazes interact. So now I have uh, sponged off the glaze right up into this little ledge that I created when I threw the cup with my wooden knife and that makes sort of a really natural place for that glaze to stop. And this is ready to go on the glaze shelf and be fired to cone six.